In this video, I will talk about the examples for multinomial probability logit models, the conditional logit model, and the mixed logit model. So please make sure that you first have watched my other video on uh, just uh, explaining what the models are all about before watching these examples. Okay, so here are the examples and for that we would use the data set uh, from um, these authors here. And this data set is on um, fishing choices for individuals. And we want to, uh, for the multinomial choice model, we would like to study how income affects this fishing choice. So the multinomial dependent variable would have four categories or alternatives. Beach, pier, private, and charter boat. This is like different ways in which you can uh, do fishing. And the independent variable would be income. Notice that it is alternative invariant, which means Every individual has um, their own income regardless of which alternative they pick uh, for fishing. And the data would be in wide form, which means one row for every individual. Um, so here we would have the fishing mode for beach, pier, uh, private and charter boat fishing. And the codes for the alternatives would be 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is how it's uh, coded in the data, but the numbers don't mean anything. So the percent frequency would be 11, 15, 35, and 38. We're basically summarizing the data, and these are the empirical frequencies. So 11% of the people picked uh, beach uh, fishing, 38% charter boat fishing, and so on. So notice here that uh, for charter boat, we would have 38% uh, is the highest frequency. So we would have three sets of coefficients for income because one of them would be normalized to zero. Uh, and that would be the reference or base categories. And we will have four sets of marginal effects because the normalization of the coefficients does not matter. So after you estimate the multinomial logit model, these are the coefficients that we would get. Um, you can report the coefficients uh, if we have charter boat fishing normalized to zero. So if you don't give it um, which category should be normalized to zero, usually software picks the one for which the Y variable right here has the highest frequency. Remember on the previous slide that 38%, that's why this one was picked as charter boat fishing. So if that the coefficients are normalized to zero, meaning there will be no coefficients reported, m meaning they're the same as zero. And these are the other coefficients that got reported in the software, and I picked them up and uh, put them here. And again, I don't record standard errors or t-statistics. I just put stars if it's significant. So the way we interpret those coefficients is in comparison to charter boat fishing. So this is our base category. Higher income is associated with lower likelihood of pure fishing. See, it's negative and significant coefficient and higher likelihood of private boat fishing. Okay, so that's, so we have, uh, in comparison to the charter boat, people with higher income would be more likely to uh, do private boat and less likely peer fishing. Um, okay, now we can estimate the same model and this time normalize the coefficients of peer fishing to zero. So notice now these coefficients here are normalized to zero. And these turn out to be the other estimated coefficients. So in comparison to peer fishing, higher income is associated with higher likelihoods of beach, private boat, and charter boat. So meaning, you know, people with higher income, they're more likely to um, fish somewhere else, not, not at peer fishing. So notice again that those, those coefficients, you cannot interpret the magnitude. And when you do the interpretations, they always have to be in reference to the to the base category uh, that we have here. And uh, here are all the coefficients, like this happened to be a positive coefficient in this one, but they don't have to be. Like, look at this one. It's significant here and it's not significant here. So that could go all kinds of uh, different ways. So I would suggest that you need to have perhaps a very strong category for uh, like a base 
category that you want to compare the other choices to and that's what you report in your in your study so these are the coefficients how about the margin effect and um, they would be the same regardless of whether alternative 4 or 2 is the base category um, this would be alternative 4 for the charter boat and this would be alternative 2 and these are the uh, marginal effects and the way to interpret it that one unit increase in income which corresponds to a thousand dollars from the data set is associated with peer fishing being two percent less likely private fishing being uh three percent more likely and charter boat fishing being uh one one percent less likely so notice one very interesting thing is that these marginal effects sum up to zero because if one alternative is more likely the other ones would be less likely um, and um, yeah, and the other thing to notice is that again, we only have one set of marginal effects, and there is no base category anymore. Uh, so we're we're interpreting these straight. And the other thing to notice is that, like the binary profit and logit model, these are the magnitudes now that we can interpret, but we cannot interpret the magnitudes of the coefficients that we. So on the previous slide, we only can talk about more likely or less likely. Only with marginal effects you can interpret those magnitudes. Okay, so now let's move on to conditional logit model example. And in this case, we want to study how income, um, price and catch rates of each alternative affects the fishing choice of individuals. So we, um, we have for the dependent variable, again, the four categories. And for independent variables, we have price and catch. These would be the alternative-specific uh, regressors. And then we have another independent variable, which I didn't put here, which is income. And that would be the um, alternative invariant regressor, so it doesn't vary with the alternatives. Here, we would also have the data being in the long form, which means uh, four rows or alternatives for each individual because we have these four choices. There will be three sets of uh, coefficients um, for uh, the alternative invariant regressor such as income and there will be only one set of coefficients for the alternative specific regressor. And there will be again four marginal effects for all regressors. So let's let's look them up. This would be the conditional logit coefficients with the co with, if we have the coefficients for charter boat fishing normalized to zero. Okay, so notice income is like the income that we had before. So these are the normalized to zero coefficients, and we would interpret those coefficients in relation to charter boat fishing. And notice how we only have one set of coefficients for price and catch rate. These are um, variables that vary with each of the alternatives. So in comparison to charter boat fishing, higher income is associated with higher likelihood of private boat fishing. So uh, we have the same interpretation here as in the case of the multinomial logit model. Um, for the alternative specific regressors like price, we have that when the price of an alternative increases, this alternative is less likely to be chosen. And for the catch rate, that if the the catch rate of an alternative increases, this alternative is more likely to be chosen. Well, think about it. If the price of that alternative uh, increases, if it's basically more costly to uh, do this kind of fishing, you're going to do less of it. And if the catch rate, how much fish you catch, that increases, you're more likely to do that choice. So that kind of makes sense. So, um, Notice that the coefficients on income in this conditional logit model would be similar to the ones um, in the multinomial uh, logit model uh, that we had before. So you can uh, look at look at the previous slides. Um, so here we would have uh, conditional logit model coefficients. This time we have the peer fishing coefficients normalized to zero. And you can see how these coefficients are exactly the same as we had them before. So uh, here, again, we have the same interpretation as the multinomial logit model. In comparison to peer fishing, 
Higher income is associated with higher likelihood of beach, private boat, and charter boat fishing. For the alternative specific, same, same interpretation as before. If the price of an alternative increases, less likely to use that alternative, and if the catch rate increases, more likely to use this alternative. Now, notice that we use if a price of A alternative increases, it's more likely or less likely for that alternative. I'm not mentioning which of the four. I'm just saying if any of the four, uh, then that's true. So again, we don't distinguish these effects by an alternative. In other words, there is no J subscript on that coefficient. Um, so again, we have very similar coefficients in this model to the ones in the multinomial logic model. And um, the, these coefficients here are, are the same, uh, regardless of which is chosen as a base category. So these are the marginal effects, and they are the same regardless of which alternative is chosen as the base category. And this is about the most complicated table that, that we will have for these models. So notice here we have uh, the variable income, and now instead of just having price, we're listing the price for each of the four options, and the catch rate for each of the four uh, options or alternatives. So these are the... the in independent variables and they of course differ based on the alternative right that that's why they're alternative variant uh, ones and these here are the four options that are are chosen um, or the fo four alternatives that are chosen so how would you interpret these marginal effects one unit increase in income which corresponds to a thousand dollars is associated with peer fishing being 1% less likely, right here. Private fishing being 3% less, uh, private boat fishing being 3% more likely, and charter fishing being 2% less likely, and that one is not significant. So again, uh, you use the words more likely, less likely, and then notice that these marginal effects do sum up to zero. So the marginal effects for the alternative specific regressors is that one unit increase in the price of uh, beach fishing here would lead to beach fishing being 0.13% uh, uh, less likely, pier fishing being 0.009% uh, more likely, private boat fishing being 0.06% more likely, and charter boat fishing 0.06% more likely. Okay, so um, here one thing to notice is that look at these uh, margin effects across the diagonal. This one is negative, this one is negative, this one is negative, and this one is negative. So this is the price of charter. If the price of charter increases, it's, uh, it's less likely to be selected. If the price of private increases, it's less likely to be selected and so on. So these are the own the own, the marginal effects on the own alternative, and these the rest of them are on the other alternatives. So if it becomes more costly to select an alternative, of course you're less likely to select it and more likely to select others. Remember that we had the same interpretation as before when we estimated the coefficients. We just couldn't put together um, what percent, and now we can say what percent. Um, so same thing with the, um, you can do the same interpretation for uh, the uh, catch rate. And notice here that now we have positive numbers across the diagonal. So if the catch rate of an alternative increases, they're more likely to be selected. Well, it's basically becoming more profitable. And if the catch rate decreases, it's less likely to be selected. And again, you could go ahead and interpret those as, as percentages. So, um, again, the marginal effects, if you look across rows, like these rows, they have to sum up to zero. So go ahead and sum them up just to see, to make sure that's, uh, that's the case. And I already went over these two points as I was talking uh, in the table. Okay, the final model that we will consider is the mixed logic model here. And in this case, we want to study the price of each alternative 
uh, how it affects the choice, um, the fishing choice of individuals when there is heterogeneity across individual in the effect of price. Now we would have the dependent variable has three categories, uh, beach, pier, and private. Notice that for this example, we're not using the fourth alternative, uh, charter boat. I'm not sure why. That's how the data set and the example came. It doesn't have to be the case, but just note that this is the case. Uh, we only have three alternatives here um, for, for no good reason. <laughs> okay, so the independent variables now would be catch, rate, and price. These are alternative specific. And we also want to include the price and the standard deviation of price in the model and dummy variables for two of the three alternatives for beach and private. So notice um, the data this time would be in long form, which means three rows of alternatives for each observation when we look at the data. So here are the, the coefficients that we're listing for the mixed logic model, um, for the mixed logic model. So how would we interpret those coefficients? If a beach alternative is chosen, consumers would be less likely to select other alternatives. So if, if a beach is chosen, they're less likely to select other alternatives. And if, um, if private boat is chosen, they are indifferent about other alternatives. Okay, so for the coefficient of price is that if the price of an alternative uh, increases, this alternative becomes more costly, then the consumers would be less likely to choose it. And this one, we would say that there is a considerable variation or heterogeneity among consumers in the effect of price. So if that was insignificant, this means that everyone affects similarly to, to price changes, but now that's not the case. There's considerable heterog heterogeneity here. So this is how to interpret the results of the mixed logic model, and I just went over these explanations. So, um, so far we talked about the theory, here's the example, and now I'm going to move to how to do these uh, estimations with software. So please watch the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.